Hello grade 9 science class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson 8. It's titled Atomic Theory. Uh, it is all about uh, the different atoms that you've learned about, the different elements that you've learned about, what they're made of. So we learned about gold and we learned about its um, symbol. Now what actually makes up gold? What is it? And we're going to talk about some of the theories that it, what, it, what they used to think uh, in the middle and then what we know now. Uh, so let's hop right in. So atomic theory. Atomic theory is the various descriptions of matter and how it behaves. So it is many different explanations of, of matter and how it behaves. It talks about what all of these elements are made of. So there have been many changes in atomic theory. And this guy, Democritus, because you can tell by his name, he lived a long time ago. Uh, he only has one name. Any substance, when cut into smaller and smaller pieces, would eventually end up with a piece that could not be further divided. So essentially he figured that if you cut up a banana over and over and over and over and over again, you cut it up, you cut it up, you cut it up. Eventually you would come up with this tiny, tiny piece of banana that you would not be able to split any further. Uh, we, ascend, we know that you know a banana can like change and then rot and then turn into uh, dirt and essentially not be banana anymore. It is not always banana. You can't just cut up a piece of a table or a piece of a countertop and get smaller and smaller pieces of that countertop. It is often made of many different uh, compounds and, and pieces. So um, this is what they used to think, that if you just cut stuff up, you would get to a point where you couldn't cut it up anymore. And that's what it was made of. Anything that you could think of was done like that. This guy named John Dalton kind of played off that. Uh, he, play, he, got, he called his model the billiard ball model because he saw the atom as being the same throughout and being indivisible. So it was the same idea where uh, different things could not be broken down and they were uh, just like smaller and smaller pieces eventually that couldn't be broken. Uh, he just imagined them as a ball and he imagined them all as different sizes, which is a key point. So here is his four points. All matter is made of, of small particles called atoms. So he called them atoms. Uh, atoms cannot be created, destroyed, or divided into smaller particles. So those are true uh, so far, even what we know today. Atoms can't be created or destroyed and cannot be divided into smaller particles. They're made of smaller particles but they cannot be divided into smaller particles. All atoms of the same element are identical in mass and size. So all elements of gold are the same. All elements of hydrogen are the same. All elements of helium are the same, uh, but they're different from the other elements. So gold and helium would not be the same as one another, but they'd be the same as all others at the, of that same element. And that compounds, which would be like water and carbon dioxide, and we're going to talk about those in particular later. Um, when those are created, atoms of different elements link together in definite proportions. So these are four things that Dalton uh, had in a theory and are all at least somewhat true um, and can be used as we move along to learn our other models. So there are some things that are correct and there are some things that aren't. The next guy that um, kind of advanced things forward was Rutherford. So Rutherford had an experiment and what he did was he shot positively charged particles through gold foil. Some went through, some were deflected a little, and some rebounded almost directly back. So what he figured was that if they hit another positively charged particle, they would rebound or repel because like charges repel each other. So he had this box with this laser and it sent positively charged particles into here. So we had a ring of tin and then a gold foil here. So he shot all these particles at the gold foil. Most of them, as you can see, followed this line and went straight through. What that suggested is that most of this gold foil is actually just empty space. Because these positively charged particles have some weight, if they were to hit anything, they would bounce. So some of them bounced, some of them went this way, some of them went this way, some of them went directly back, 
but most of them went through. So what that suggested was that it was a planetary model. Uh, the planetary model was because he saw the electrons as circling the center of the atom like planets. He discovered the nucleus, which is tiny, heavy, and positively charged at the center of the atom, and he thought the rest of the atom was empty space. So that kind of matched with his experiment, that most of the positively charged particles went through, but some bounced off of the nucleus, which was tiny, heavy, and positively charged. He later established that there are at least two other kinds of particles inside the nucleus of the atom. Uh, so they would be protons and neutrons. So what he said was that protons and neutrons were located in the nucleus. Uh, protons have positive charge, neutrons have no charge. And that electrons went around the nucleus like uh, planets in a planetary model. The diagram that he kind of came up with looked like this. We had these things called protons, which are positive, along with neutrons, which are neutral in the middle, in this thing called the nucleus. And then we had electrons all the way around the outside. So most of this is empty space, but we have this positively uh, charged piece in the middle. Niels Bohr was a student of Rutherford, and he kind of took this a little bit further um, with his experiment. So he calls his the orbital model because he saw the electrons as circling the nucleus at different energy levels. So essentially there are rings around the nucleus, one here, one here, one here as you go out, uh, and they're all at different energy levels. What he did was he passed electric current through different uh, gases, and they were made to glow, which means the energy was released. He proposed that these electrons surrounded the nucleus in specific energies or shells, and bounced back and forth between each of these. And when they jumped from uh, down from a top one, uh, they released energy, which was seen as light. And each electron had a specific energy when they moved from one energy level to another, which produced a specific light. So he didn't think that they were moving through space kind of willy-nilly. He saw them as in particular orbits, uh, and they could jump between them, but not be anywhere in between them. Uh, he kind of saw it like this, with the protons and the neutrons in the middle, and electrons in uh, orbit, um, sorry, on the outside. Uh, so the electrons are in these circles, and they are not between them. So, this is what we know. The atom is the smallest particle of an element that keeps the properties of that element. So, each, there's an atom of gold, it keeps the properties of gold, even though you can't necessarily see it. All atoms are made of three kinds of smaller particles, and we call them subatomic particles. That's key point three above me, which is very important, subatomic particles. Uh, the three subatomic particles are protons, electrons, and neutrons. So we have atoms, and then we have subatoms, essentially. So atoms keep the uh, properties of the element, but then they have, they're made up of these three things um, called protons, electrons, and neutrons. Subatomic particles are too small to see, and our understanding of them is based on physical and chemical experiments. We've never actually just taken pictures of these things. This is just what we found out. And to give you a size feel for it, if an atom was the size of a football field, then the nucleus would be a grain of sand in the center of the field. So it would be tiny, tiny, tiny compared to the rest of it. The nucleus is a tiny region of the center of the atom, uh, and it is composed of the protons and the neutrons. The electrons are floating in the space in between uh, on the um, different circles, the different orbits that we could um, kind of picture, and they are not in between those, but on those. When we compare these particles, we have symbols for them. They're given here. Protons are P positive, neutrons are N zero, and electrons are E negative. Those are for negative charges and positive charges and no charges. Uh, we'll get into what the mass means, but just, to, just so you know, protons have mass, neutrons have mass, and electrons have no mass at all. That is why there is a concentration of mass in the center and then space all around on the outside, as proven by Rutherford's experiment. The charges are given here, positive, neutral, and negative, and then their locations as well, protons and neutrons in the, in the nucleus, and the electrons surrounding the nucleus. And again, electrons are found in special regions called energy levels or shells. 
So that's uh, in the first, second, or third shells often. An electron is spread out negative charge that exists in the region as a whole. So it kind of occupies that entire space. Protons and neutrons cannot leave the nucleus at all. They are stuck there. What I'd like you guys to do is check out the review video. It goes over a lot of what I've talked about and it kind of puts an animation to it, which is very, very useful. And then I'd like you to get into the review questions for your job. I think there's 12 or 13 of them. Uh, and you may need to do some extra research besides your notes and the YouTube video. You may need to go more in depth um, and you can ask me questions if you have any, uh, if you need any help at all. Thanks very much for watching everyone and I will see you in class. Thanks.